Hello, 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 everybody. This is Christine Bertram coming to you live from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. I am going to be stamping live in my makeshift hive tonight with you. <laughs> tonight is the In Good Taste card class. And I am so excited because I had about 10 people that did the online version for this class. So I am making sure that we go through everything that you need <laughs> to make your cards as beautiful as you can make them. So I'm going to also pull up my phone so I can watch your lovely comments come in because they help keep me engaged. I love it. So, ooh, I, uh, my brother's been messaging me. We have, what is today, Thursday? We have a wedding on Friday, sa Saturday. <laughs> so it's in a barn and we're trying to figure out what time is it at? Where is it? What do we need to wear? <laughs> so yeah, all that good stuff. I haven't been to a bigger event since probably January or February when I had the retreat that I helped host. So yeah, I, uh, I'm not sure. I'm thinking that everybody's gonna be um, dressed up, but it's, <laughs> it's different and everybody's gonna have masks on. I'm wondering if people are gonna be buying special pretty masks that are all nice for their wedding attire. So hi, Kathy. Hi, Kelly. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to pull this up real quick on my phone. So oh, lots of progress, girls, on the hive. Uh, I owe you the next update because phase four is, I would say, pretty much officially complete. <laughs> my mom and I went to town. That's what we always say. <laughs> we went to town. Uh, hi, Angela. A painting this past week. Um, and it was the weekend. I took a vacation day Friday, if you remember. And then we painted the first coat on Friday. And then we did Saturday and Sunday. So, and that was it. So here we go. I found myself. Yay. Okay. Cool beans. So we got my, my purple wall. And I'm so excited. Hi, Arliss. I have my purple wall. If you're going to ask me what color it is, I'm going to tell you it's Highland Heather. <laughs> Hi, Kate. I'm going to say it's Highland Heather, um, but it's not really. It's called Berry Cream. And the entire time that we were working on it, we're like, wow, that looks like a really good color to put on, or a really good flavor for ice cream. It looked just like berry licious. <laughs> That's how I describe this purple wall. So, hi, Sue. So, I have berry licious, but it's not really. It's um, berry cream. And then I don't know, I have to look up what Malabar means, but Malabar is the tan color that I ended up going with. And the green was a little bit of an issue. Do you remember a couple weeks ago I was showing you all the colors I had picked out? I had picked out Contented Green and Privileged Green. Those were just the names of them. And they looked like garbage when we got them on the wall. So it's always good to start lighter, girls, and then you can go darker. And so we took the paint back to Sherwin-Williams, and they were able to add whatever colors to make them the next step darker, which I'm excited for these names. Hi, Sandy. Uh, we, so we ended up with Coastal Plains and basil <laughs> so <laughs> oh my gosh out of all these gallons of paint we started with i think it was three four five gallons and then two quarts we ended up with about two quarts of a combination of all the colors hi Jean. so thank you for sharing sue so we did pretty good i had all these extra jar like the jars from when you buy jam and the labels were already taken off and so we could put all the extra paint in the jar so it was really good so jean i hope you're doing good happy healing to you i hope that you've been doing much better now than it was a couple a couple weeks ago to a month ago so it's funny how they say time heals everything <laughs> so hopefully you're on the mend and everything's going good so all right so hi judy immel so, um, so that's a little bit of a status update on the project and I had class last night and I had class on Monday. So I got to give a little private tour to those girls that came to class and they, they were all into like, it's just fun seeing color on the walls. So super exciting. So hi, Linda. So girls, as you're coming in, I love it when you tell me where you're from and it also helps others see where we're reaching. It's all so fun. Uh, oh, you shared and you're in Virginia. See, you're reading my mind. I love it, Linda. <laughs> so thanks for sharing too. Hi, Jean's watching. That's exciting. 
So um, I will, I promised you, I will post a next phase of the project. So it's gonna be phase four, painting drywall is done. And I'm so excited that we started to put the siding on as well. So my builder was working the last two days and we've got the dormer up top done and he did siding in the back. So that's super exciting. He wants to finish it by Tuesday. Yay! <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> and then um, my electrician came today. So we have outlets. Oh my gosh! We have lights. And so now it's like I'm like pretending to flip the lights on. <laughs> so we can go into the mud room and flip lights on. And so when it's dark, we don't have to put our lights, like our flashlights on. Hi! So yay! Thanks for joining. Um, so that's exciting. Okay, so that's my little story about the project, how we're at with it. Um, we're on target like for completion if you're wondering how much longer yet hi gloria we should be finishing this project my goal is october 1st that it's ready to move in so i set up the the cabinet should be done by august 31st i already made an appointment for the countertops to get measured on september 1st and then they should be installed on september 14th so exciting yay and then floors in the middle so oh gosh british columbia that's exciting gloria yay i'm so excited so okay so that's a little bit about that. And then tonight is the In Good Taste card class. And this is a bundle class. And I had two people that purchased this as a bundle and they both received the free gift of the wood elements. So hi, Anne. So every month I do two core classes. One is the monthly class and it's a combination of different three different stamp sets or bundles that I feature. And that class is coming up next week. And then I always do a bundle class. And the bundle class, I try to keep it within the family of the, the suite. I try to use everything from the suite at least once. And we do four cards. And sometimes they look all cohesive and cool, like they're collected in the same group. And sometimes they're all random. <laughs> so I, I just, I go with the flow with creating. And so tonight is a bundle class. And so um, I'm gonna show you all the products that I use. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I'm going to show you the, the new stamp and cut and emboss machine. Oh my gosh. It is like right there. <laughs> so last week, Thursday, I think I promised you we were going to look at it because I already had it last week, Thursday. And I completely forgot one step on the card. The card we made, where's the card we made last week? Um, right here. <laughs> Let me flip this out. So we made this card last week right here. And I completely forgot to use the brick wall embossing folder on this card and run it through the, the new stamp and cut and emboss machine. I, I completely forgot. And I was all done. I'm like, oh, shoot, I never did that. <laughs> so I'm saving it for tonight. <laughs> so I thought I would have an opportunity to go and do a special live. Hi, Dar. I thought I would have time to do a special live with you girls sometime during the week. It just, it never happened. So I'm like, okay, we'll do it tonight. <laughs> so, oh, hi, Deanne from Michigan. Yay. Okay. So that's the new stamping cup and emboss machine back there. And I was going to show you girls the plates and how it works and give you a little tutorial. And what I noticed about, um, I have a, a little, I made some notes about what I saw, um, differences between the two machines. So yay. Okay. So in good taste let me flip this down all right so what i've got here is the annual catalog the in good taste suite of products is on page 122 123 124. it is a little bit smaller of a suite there is a bundle which includes stamps and also the dies and i have them right here actually so it includes stamps and dies now the thing is that these dies do not correlate so well with the images that are in here. They work nicely with the sentiments, but there is no die for the feather. There is no die for this or this or this or that. So the cards that I designed tonight, <laughs> I had the girls fussy cutting last night. So they had to fussy cut out a couple of things. If you are not a fond fan of the stamps, you should still consider these dies because it's so nice to have labels for your sentiments that you can put on the outside of your cards. So the bundle is part of the suite of products. And then in addition, there is an embossing folder. It's one of my favorites. 
It is called Tasteful Textile. It's a 3D embossing folder. It's where if you had the blue plate, that's what you would use with this embossing folder. Now, with the new scan and cut emboss machine, it's not blue, it's actually gray. So that's part of the suite, and I used that a couple times. And then these wood elements are the other thing. This is it, it's a very small suite. So if you get these wood elements, there's four sheets of them, and there's a few different shapes. There's these little leaves, and then there's the big leaves, and I didn't use any of the little leaves on the cards, but I used these bigger leaves. I used this little thing, I, I call it foliage. <laughs> and then there's some circles and some plus signs. And so I used a little bit of both of them. So the wood elements are also, hi Tammy, Tammy made these cards with me last night, yay. <laughs> so Judy, you're watching this. You're not supposed to be watching because you wanna uh, make your card kits based off of how you think they should be put together. Oh, I lied, there's one more thing. There is some designer series paper. And this is, I wanna call this a super pack of designer series paper. This is on page 123 and there's double in here. So if you look at the price for the paper, the price actually says $21, which is two packs of paper. Well, you get double the paper too. So there's a second side here. And so I have all of these with the front and the back. And it's a lot of materials is what I call this, like bricks and woods and cottons and marbles, textiles and hardwoods and like I think like walls and countertops actually, like building material when I look at this paper. Very, very versatile, lots of soft colors, and it just goes with everything. So Jean loves the stamp set, that's awesome. I like, I love this feather. I'm, I don't know, I'm a feather fan. And I all call it um, a flower a couple times, I'm sure tonight, because last night I called it a flower a couple times. So just know that if I say flower I'm referring to the feather <laughs> so but I like the font in here and this little boxy that looks cool too they actually look like chocolate bars um Bonnie and Cheryl were saying last night that they um made a card and made it look like that was chocolate so okay so that's a little bit about what is going to be used in this class tonight so in case you're needing anything I know that some of you already got your supplies for this, but in case you need anything extra for it, that's where I got stuff from. And I didn't pull in a lot of other stuff from the catalog, but I did pull in a few other things. So, oh, Jean loves the feather too. Yeah, so these are, so just so you know too, um, uh, I, I forgot to print this today. So the hose code did change. So this one is gone and now it's the EMFPXXMH. So if you girls need anything, I do have a special tonight. If you aren't already signed up for the monthly class and you place an order tonight, a minimum $35 order, these are the three cards that I'm gonna be making next week. They're the monthly cards that feature the prized peony, the hippo happiness, and the the duck card. I think it's called Field Journal. Um, so I have these three cards. I'm just reading a comment as it came through. So um, I have these three cards that are gonna be for kits that I'm mailing out next week. So if anybody needs them, you can just let me know. So hang on here one second. And okay, so the cards that we're gonna be making tonight are these four cards. <laughs> so I don't generally make a lot of cards that are horizontal. So this is a really different class where I have three that are horizontal and one's vertical. I find myself making vertical cards a lot. So these two cards are actually, they look very similar because they both feature the Knight of Navy and the Rococo Rose with the Whisper White. And then I pulled in a completely off the wall different card and I pulled in a stamp set called Whiskey Business and I still used like the dye here and some of the, the paper but pulled in some other product because girls I was getting a lot of flowery cards and I can make flowery cards till I'm blue in the face but I need some manly cards every now and then. This one's one of my favorites. When I first made this card I actually used Petal Pink on the bottom here and it was not the right color so I switched it up to Blushing Bride. So yeah, so that looks much better. So I'm wondering which one do we want to start with? Um, hmm, let's see here. I'm gonna save this one for the end and we'll do that one. And both of these are fun folds, girls. So let's do this one first. Okay, so 
Have you ever? Yeah, Diane, that was definitely a comment that was a spammer. And I came, I came, I looked up and I'm like, what is, what in the world are they saying? <laughs> so I grabbed my phone real quick and I deleted that comment. So I saw that you saw that it was a spammer too. So I was like, what are they doing here? So I deleted it. So you don't have to worry about seeing it. So, um, yeah, <laughs> just ignore it, girls. Do not push on that comment whatsoever. So I have no idea where that came from, but so this is a Z Fold card and hi Elaine, thanks for coming in. We're just getting started. So this is a Z Fold card and it's a little bit different. I wanted to make sure that when I designed this, that this piece of designer series paper was three by four because when you do three by four, that means that you get 12 out of a sheet of paper. And then I kind of worked from there. And so the bottom part here is, hi Chris. Okay, so we've got Knight of Navy here. Let me get my card so I can tell you the sizes here. Oh, Judy, you finished your cards already. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So this is 11 inches going this way and four and a quarter going this way. And this is just in half here. So this is half is five and a half. So that's scored already. And then this is two and three quarters, which is just half of the half. Okay, so that's a little bit about the measurements for that. So we have here the piece of Knight of Navy and the piece of Whisper White. Now the Whisper White is 10 and 3 eighths by 3 and 3 eighths. And I've scored it at 4 and 3 eighths and 7, and it's hard to see it, but it's here. It's 7 and 3 eighths. So 4 and 3 eighths and 7 and 3 eighths. Okay, so those are our two bases, or like our base and a mat. And then I've already got some bits and parts here for us. So we've got the Rococo Rose, and that's four and three sixteenths by three and three sixteenths, which allows the designer series paper then to be a three by four. Now, if you're looking at this, you're gonna say, well, your piece of paper here has more blue in it. That's the way that the designer series paper goes. It's all a collage of different textures and some has more blue, some has more of the white. And so what you got is what you got. I, I couldn't control who got what. So this, for my card, I have one that's got a little less blue in it. Okay. Then everybody got in their kit. Oh man. <laughs> so I don't have the flower. Oh, I know where the flower is. It's on my desk. Okay. I might have to run, go get the flower. So everybody got a piece like this die cut label. So I cut that out for everybody because I can do the die cutting. And so you'll just have to find a sentiment for yourself. So the sentiment that I did pick here is from this set. It says, just saying hello. It's just a very nice versatile card that you can use for, for anything. Um, you could stamp happy birthday in it. You could stamp thinking of you, get well, anything you need. So this says just saying hello. So I already have mine done. So those at home with the kits, you're going to have to stamp a sentiment on there. So, and I use Knight of Navy ink. Everybody's got, um, I wanna show you my baby bows. So, <laughs> so I have my bow maker here, but in your kits, I already gave you a little baby bow just like that so that you're ready to put that on your card. But I'll show you girls. I thought oh, it was time. I haven't shown you how to do a bow in a while. Then I've got a piece of vellum cardstock that was in everybody's kits. Now, I had a very, very special guest appearance from a very, very awesome die set that I absolutely, absolutely love. <laughs> that was a lot of love there. <laughs> this is one of my favorite die sets. It's called Forever Flourishing. I, I don't know, girls, if you've seen, I've used a lot of that leaf and I've used a lot of that. Well, this time I call this one the horns. <laughs> so, because if you hold it like this, it looks like your horns. <laughs> so, so what I did is I die cut for everybody out of vellum cardstock. Now, if you don't know what vellum cardstock is, it comes, Stampin' Up! sells it. It comes in a pack of paper with 20 sheets and it's a thicker vellum. It's not a thin chintzy vellum. It's, it's got some thickness to it. So, so just know like if you want to die cut with it, it's not going to rip apart. I mean, it's very delicate, it is, but it's not as delicate as some thinner vellum that you could used to get back in the day. So I've got my horns here ready to go. And then also part of the flourishing dies, there's one, two, three of these little flowers right here. And what's nice though is there's actually four. So one, two, three, four. Stampin' Up! about a year ago, with I think the release of last year's new annual catalog, they started putting multiples of some of the things that you would potentially die cut twice or three times. And so there's two of those and there's four of those. So that's pretty awesome that they started doing that. Otherwise you're running the big shot back and forth. Well, not the big shot, the scan and cut and emboss machine. <laughs> or trying to come up with an acronym for it that says 
is a lot smaller, so it's not so many words. So I have three of those done for you in your kit. So we have a little bit of stamping to do. So let's grab the piercing mat. So for those at home that need to do some stamping, now if you don't have this exact stamp, it's okay. You don't have to use this exact stamp, but I used from this set, I used this foliage one here, and that looks like this. If you don't have that, find something else that's similar. And, and honestly, if you don't put it on, it's okay. But if you see here what I did, and it, it just adds a little bit of depth and some texture around the edge here. So, okay, so watch what I'm gonna do here. So this is called creating your own background with a stamp, and you're gonna be stamping it multiple times. So I got one this way, and I like to do a mismatch of these. I don't like to do them all in the same order. Normally, that's not my scene. Normally I like things to be straight and even, but in this case, we're gonna do a little bit of different patterns going on here so that it doesn't look uniform. So. This is just Night of Navy ink. We use that a lot in these couple cards. And so now I am doing a little bit down the side here because when you look at this, you can see behind the card here. So I wanna make sure that when the person who gets this, if they, they check this card out, that they see, oh yeah, she did do all of her stamping. It looks super cool. So I'm gonna do all of this right here and then into the other side as well. I know those two are the same, but I'm gonna switch it up right here. And then we're gonna get one right here, a little baby one right there. Okay, so if you don't have this stamp, it's okay. Use something else or don't use anything at all. It will still look nice if you um, don't use anything or find something else. So that is all that I use, oh, there's one more. I take it back, hang on girls, hold up, wait a minute. We gotta finish the inside. So you can see what I did is I put a one here and one there as well. I like to decorate the inside. Now you just have to make sure that you fold your card properly so that you, let's see here, it goes like, <laughs> it's a fun fold. It's fun figuring it out. Okay, so we're gonna do one going up the, the side over here now, when you stamp this side, I do not recommend stamping like this with it open because you will hit this area here. So when you stamp this, you make sure you fold it and then stamp it, and you're gonna make it look like the foliage is coming down like a tree, kinda. Okay, we're gonna give that a second. I notice with navy ink and red ink, sometimes they don't dry so fast for me, and they they smear and then they get on your fingers like that. So I was using some navy ink just earlier, and it just gets all over the place. Okay, and that's how you clean the stamp. Just grab your stamp and chamois, and I'm so happy that it was wet yet from last week. <laughs> Sometimes they have a tendency to dry out depending on how much air conditioning I have going on in this house. So now we can do a little bit of um, bone folder action. So this is the bone folder that Stampin' Up! sells that you can get through me as well. And that helps to create like a nice crisp. You see the difference? That one isn't burnished yet where this one is. And so I'm gonna do this side as well. Give it a nice crease. You see that makes it go really flat. Okay, so that's folded. We'll do this to uh, this one as well. Fold that one this way, and then this is gonna fold back like this. Now again, this was just scored halfway at five and a half, and then this was scored at halfway of the five and a half, which is two and three quarters. Okay, now how to put this together. Fun folds are actually not so bad if you can figure out the best way to put them together. And I also noticed here when I folded this, I ended up with a little, it's hard to see there, but if I, you can see I have a little lip here. So if that happens to your kid at home, what I would do if it were me is I would grab my paper scissors and I would just, you could do paper or um, a trimmer, but because you have the folded edge right there, you can use that as a guide and just trim straight up, and then just hope it's really straight, and then it's good. <laughs> so so you have that, I was using this folded edge as a guide to flatten it, and I didn't like that extra little bit hanging over. So that just has a tendency of how you fold the paper. Sometimes if I would have folded it the opposite way, like that, 
I don't think that would have happened. <laughs> so, okay, so here's my trick for putting this fun bowl together. Grab your liquid glue or your tape runner, and I'm gonna put a little line of it right there, and then I'm gonna put a line here. Now, instead of trying to figure out where to glue on here, by putting that line here and by putting that line here, I'm not gonna overstep my boundaries with glue at all. <laughs> so, so now I can just take this, and my main objective here is to center the white on the blue so that it looks good. As long as you have the white on the top here where you want it, then you should be good for the bottom part. So I'm looking at the top, bottom, the sides. So I'm happy with that. I think that looks pretty straight. <laughs> so now you're like, well, what about the inside? Well, here's the easy way to do this. You're just gonna open it up like this and then you can flip this over and put a little bit of glue or adhesive on the back side. And now all you're gonna do is flip this shut and press on it so that the glue sticks. Okay, <clears throat> now that opens up just like that. So, and that is straight. So as long as you cut and scored it straight, it should be straight on the outside and the inside if you lined it up good. All right, so then we have here, I'll flip that down a little bit. So we have our Rococo Rose piece and we have our designer series paper and that is just glued straight on there. I did not use dimensionals, which I, I'm, like there's hard, hardly any dimensionals on this card, but just wait, we'll pop in a little bit. We'll get that saying popped up and we'll get that flower popped up. But I love the liquid glue because I can, you can see here I'm trying to wiggle it around until I get it centered where I want it. We're gonna flip that over and we're gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the back of that, like so, and then flip that over. Now this is where it's important to figure out where your patterns are. So for those of you at home that have your kits you know, you're gonna, okay, well that would cover a lot of that up there. But if I go like this, a lot of it's gonna get covered up under the flower as well. So you just have to figure out how your pattern looks best. And I'm thinking for me, I'll have it down so at least you can see some more of those, those lines coming up. And that's just gonna go on the white mat that is part of our Z fold. Okay, then there is the label, which is already cut out. And if you look on this card though, there is a little bit of blue around the edge. And that is done by sponging. And I am so excited. I'm trying this for the first time because I saw Tammy was at class last night and I've never done my sponging like this. So this is gonna be new for me. So I generally go like this. Okay, hi everybody. <laughs> back. <laughs> that was a little bit of a rigmarole. I was doing such a fabulous job sponging using Tammy's technique and I looked down and I'm like, oh shoot, it lost the feed. And I should have guessed that was going to happen because I've been playing with my internet. So long story short, my internet does not reach into where the sheet shed is going to be at all. And I need internet in there if we're gonna be doing live streaming and live classes in the hive. So I'm gonna have to get something to um, like do a Wi-Fi extender or a booster. So. So what I did is I bought a Wi-Fi booster and it like kind of goes through your modem and your router. Hi Sandy, thanks for coming back. <laughs> so I kind of know what happened, I think. And I should have guessed it was gonna happen, but I just didn't put it together because it was working. And so I'm like, oh, we're just gonna keep going with it. So. So I bought a Wi-Fi booster. It has a router, hi Bobby, yay, yes, I'm back. Um, I, it has a router and two satellites. And so I had to, I hate messing with technology, girls. I honestly, I am not that technologically savvy. I am enough to be dangerous, but I'm by no means deadly. And so when I start unplugging cables and 
routers and modems and having to put things back together oh it makes my heart nervous it makes my heart pound and i'm like what if i mess it up and what if it doesn't work okay so i had to get this because otherwise i don't have internet for you girls in in the hive so i had to connect this new router and this was let's say sunday night so hi tracy so it happened sunday night so i should have tested this before today but I didn't, you know how it goes. So um, I had to connect the router and then we tested it and it worked, it was awesome. So I took my laptop into the she shed, which is 55 feet from where I'm sitting, okay? That's a long ways. And so these two satellites, one's gonna be in Tyler's workshop area and one's gonna be in the hive. And it, I don't know how good it's going to be. Hi, Hillary. <laughs> you didn't miss me. We got caught up with technology. So we just had gotten started. So what happened, though, is I didn't think anything of it because when I, I got to choose. So, like, I have a, a, a new router now. And I chose my same username for the router, and I ch chose the same password. So it was seamless when my computer... Well, I just logged into my computer and it was working because it was the same username and password. And I didn't think it would be a big issue, but I'm using a tablet here and I'm using an iPhone up here. And so when I connected everything, nothing was working. And this was like at five o'clock. So about an hour and a half ago, I got on here at five and I'm like, what's gonna happen? So the tablet worked fine. Tablet went right into Switcher Studio. It was good. Everything was hunky-dory. Life was happy. Okay, so then I go into my phone and it's stuck, completely stuck. And I'm like, oh, what did I do? I messed it up. So I, <laughs> hi Kelly, you're back, thanks. So I had to, like, I shut my phone off. You know how it is, you turn your phone off and on in a couple of times, see if that does the trick. And so I turned it on and off a couple of times, that didn't do it. And then I'm like, oh, it has to be something with the internet. So I unconnected the internet, disconnected, went back. And then I actually took Switcher Studio app off the phone and put it back on. And I got the phone to work. And I'm like, oh, life is good, yay, <laughs> life is good. So so I'm like, okay, then we connected. We were rolling for like 25 minutes. And then what happened was technology caught up with the tablet. And the tablet did the same thing that the phone did after the fact. And so for 10 minutes now, I've been trying to, I had to uninstall Switcher Studio, I had to redo the internet, I had to turn it on off like five times, and needless to say, we're back. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious, great balls on fire, girls. Like, oh, I just, that's how I feel. That's like what Tyler does that all the time when he's like, uh, so <laughs> I do that now. <laughs> so deep breaths, and then we're gonna be good. So back to where we were. Thanks for everybody. I hope that a lot of people come back on. I had about 35, 40 people that kind of were going in and out. So I'm, we're, we're going to slowly get people back in here, but I'm going to get back into the card making. And for those that had shared it earlier, if you could reshare this um, live video again, that would be outstanding and awesome. I love it. So th thanks for sharing me again. <laughs> so, But I was in the middle of this, I think, and I don't know when I looked up, I don't know if you girls caught where I was. We were just at the process of um, folding this and gluing this together. Um, in the interim, I went and found my flower that was in the table in the classroom and I fussy cut that while <laughs> things were coming back up. So by the magic of TV, our flower is ready. But this is what I was going goo goo gaga over. This label, and it's really hard to see it, but as I get closer, you can see all this soft blue. And I was showing, and I don't know how much of this you caught, but what I was showing you was Tammy taught me this last night. Girls, I've been stamping for 20 years, and I still learn things every day. Thanks for coming back, Chris. Okay, so I was showing you how she taught me how you go at it from the side here, and it just makes it really soft and so I had just finished doing the whole perimeter of this label, and then I realized we were stuck. <laughs> so that's how this label got done. And so you can see that it's really soft all the way around the edges like that. I like to do that when, um, yep, you're back too. So I like to do that when you have a little bit, like there's a little bit too much white that was around the edge here. So, so for you at home that have the kits, like if you don't have a sponge, what I would recommend using is 
a paper towel or a toilet paper or a Kleenex, some, some sort of paper product. If you have a dark blue ink pad, whatever blue you use, you can just dip in a little bit and you're just gonna have to get it to the right consistency. Hi, Kathy, you're back too, yay. So we had technology issues. <laughs> Hi, Gloria, yep, back again. So, so if you don't have a sponge at home, you can definitely find something else to use in place of the sponge, okay? So I uh, think that's it for the Night of Navy ink. And so I'm gonna shut this up so I don't get myself all full of that. <laughs> all right, now we have some happy assembly time. Yay. All right, so I did pop this up. And so I've got a few of these little guys left over here. So when I use my dimensionals up, I like to use the edge of the, the sheets here too. Do not throw this stuff away. That is perfectly good dimensional. And all you have to do is cut it into the size you want. So when you ask me what I do for dimensionals, I usually like to keep things about an inch apart or so here. So I'm putting the dimensionals on here. Now, when I put this label on, I did not center it. So that might be your first instinct. Oh, you can see the difference. Okay, maybe you can. So look at this. So this is the one that I sponge the way I normally do it. Hi, Mary. <laughs> Thanks for joining again. This is how I normally sponge it. And then this is the way that Tammy just taught me how to sponge it. Both look nice. It just depends on what the look you're going for is. So the way I do it is I go like this with the sponge. So now when you're putting this label on, I did not center it because I knew that my rose would need to go up here and I didn't want it covering up my words. So I actually brought the label down so that it was a little bit closer to the bottom margin and the right margin like that. So, so don't be afraid to not center things because we are gonna fill this side in over here with the flower. Okay, so then you have your flower. Now this is stamped in Rococo Rose and the flower does come from this stamp set called Tasteful Touches. So that's where that came from. And the Rococo Rose is one of the ink colors that carried over. So it's on its final year now. So there's about a good eight months or 12 months. I don't know, what are we in? We're in August. So we're already two months into the new Stampin' Up! year. So I'm looking here, I'm gonna use some glue dots for this. So what I'm gonna do is put a glue dot. You could use liquid glue, you could use tear tape. It's really what you want to do. But I'm putting one right in the middle of the, my, I call these my horns, because when they're like this, <laughs> they look like horns. So I'm going to put this right behind here. Do you need to use that pierce mat to do the stamping on with the red stamps? No, Kathy, you definitely don't need to use this when you're using the red stamps. And technically you, you probably don't want to because it would probably give you too much cushion. And if you rock, you might get a halo. The only thing is I don't have a piece of paper down here. Like I just have, it's a piece of tile that's three by three. And I don't, I'll be honest with you. I don't have a piece of like, I mean, I could pull in like this so next time I'll pull this in. It's just a piece of scratch paper. Um, I wanted, I didn't want to get blue ink all over my work surface here. So that's why I use the Pure Cement. Hi Kelly, hi Peggy. So we've got our little bit of leaves that are from the vellum on there. Now, this is where you girls can and guys can pull out your Stella pen. So I wanted to show you how to use a Stella. So in case you're getting a Stella pen for the first time, time it's very important you know how to use her <laughs> so it's in a plastic wrap like this and you just pull her out and if you want to you can read the directions and if you just want to watch me <laughs> that might be easier sometimes show and tell is a lot easier than reading directions so a lot of people get confused because they there's this black ring on here and that ring is right now to prevent Stella from like if they sent Stella already opened with shipping and air freight, there would be glitter all over the place. So this ring is just a protective uh, piece of plastic so that the Stella isn't punctured. So this piece of black, you can just throw that away or recycle it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna twist this right back. Hi, Vicki. Okay, so now to open Stella, you don't twist her anymore. You just pull the cover off. But if you go to use Stella, you're not going to have anything coming out because she isn't started. <laughs> so, so on your Stella pen, 
there are two words that say, they each say push and they're on opposite ends. And what happens is you push those in and the glitter runs through the barrel. <laughs> and you don't wanna do this too much because a lot of it will run through the barrel and you don't want all this glitter running out. So I generally don't do, um, I don't do it over paper because when you have liquid and paper, it doesn't mix so well. And I generally go over my hand. I don't know why, but I generally go on my hand because then if I get glitter on my hand, I can just wipe it right up. <laughs> so, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this at an angle and I'm gonna squeeze. And I don't know if you guys are gonna see it, but little by little here, you see right there, that's the glitter coming out. So I squeeze twice very gently for a short period of time and there a little bit more came out. If you squeeze for like five or 10 seconds, it's just gonna come running right through and it's gonna make a big pooly mess. Um, and what I like to do is just practice on my hand here. <laughs> and don't, you, you don't have to do your hand. Like honestly, you could do the paper if you wanted, but I feel like I can wash it off easy. So there's not enough coming out yet here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze it one more time and see if I got, you know, eventually the glitter will work its way down into the brush tip. And that's when you know you got Stella started. And now I'm seeing it. So it's starting to get a little bit wet and I'm getting a little glitter. And honestly, I don't know what it does to your skin. <laughs> like, I guess I could care less if I get glitter on my skin. <laughs> Tyler would be completely upset if he did this to his hand <laughs> because he hates girl glitter. He loves man glitter. And I don't know if you girls know it, but man glitter is sawdust. And we had sawdust and man glitter all over us <laughs> this past week, it seems. So now I've got my Stella started, okay? So for, for those girls that are just getting familiar with who Stella is and what she's all about, now you know how to get the pen actually started. And once you've got it started, the glitter will, as long as there's glitter in the barrel, it'll keep giving you glitter on the brush. But what happens is you glitter 15 things or 20 things, all of a sudden that barrel runs dry again and you have to squeeze it again. And then more stuff will come through the barrel. So you have to keep rejuvenating her. She will dry out and that's not good. You gotta keep her hydrated. Okay, so we've got our three little guys here uh, glitter, gl glor glitterified. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I actually am going to take a glue dot and put it on the end of each one of these and I'm gonna spot, find a spot to tuck them into the behind my horns here. So I've got this one going right about here. And I like to have things go in front of and behind. So in this case, I tried to get my little blue foliage stem to come in front of the flower. And so we're gonna put another one on this one and we're gonna bring this one down a little bit. And if you're wondering what it's gonna look like on your card while you're building your flower, you can just hover over the top of it. And I'm gonna put one more on the side. So we know that florists love doing flowers in threes. So that's why I picked three for this. And this last one, I'm gonna have it come out a little bit longer and give it a little bit of length at a diagonal. So that's what I've got going on here. Now to put this on, I'm going to do a couple dimensionals along the top but I'm not gonna do them along the bottom. So I'll show you why in a second here. So we're gonna put two of them along the top and pick those up. Now, the reason I'm only doing the two on the top is because this area here is already um, dimensionalized. And so by putting one there, it would make it diagonal. So instead, what I'm gonna do in this area, you could do liquid glue, you could do tear and tape, you could do your glue dots, but I'm gonna do more of a flat glue there so that when I put this on the side here, that it stays flush with the label. Thanks, Kathy, I appreciate that. So I, I try to make it so that they weren't so uniform. <laughs> All right, we have a baby bow. So Kathy, you're getting a bow maker from me this coming Whoa, I think in like a week and a half. And a couple people have gotten Anne. I know Anne's not on right now, but Anne just got a bow maker for me. So just know when you get the bow maker, if you're having a hard time getting the nails out, like that one came out really easy, but this one comes out hard. You can get a pliers or use a scissors that's not so good. <laughs> and you can just gently pull that out. So these are every half inch and the middle is an inch, but then it's every half inch. And so you're gonna put your nails in so that they're going up and down. I've already pre-cut my ribbon because I knew about how much I was gonna need. But 
if you don't know how much ribbon you're going to need, keep it on the spool so that you don't waste any. So this is going to get wrapped around here twice and you're going to make two bunny ears on each side and then you uh, put the, hi, thanks for sharing our list. So what I did is the right side, I'm right handed, so I generally put the right side underneath the left one and then it comes up and over and then underneath and I did not cut myself a lot. So. We're gonna see how well these little nimble fingers work. My mom says that I'm lucky yet. I have little nimble fingers that can make bows. <laughs> she said, wait till you get older. You're not gonna be able to do this in 20 years. So I, um, I'm gonna see if I can get it. I was really mean to myself by giving myself a little bit. <laughs> I got it, look at that. Okay, so for you girls, I made all of your little kits. Your kits have your little baby bows in them. So that is how you make the most adorbsy, cutesy, fun little bow. And then when you're done with your nails, you can just stick them back in the side for storage. So here we have a little bow. Now generally there is a back and a front to it. So when it was facing away from you, that to me is usually the front, which gives you the nicest centerpiece. So grab yourself a little glue dot and put that right where you want the bow to go. And that is gonna stick right in the, I guess we'll call it the crevice of the flower. And then you wanna grab your ribbon scissors and trim off that nasty little end on it. Like for you girls that got kits, you're not gonna have such a bad end. You just wanna trim your ends so that they look nice and are shorter. So I'm gonna just trim that up like so. Now this is that white seam, um, white crinkled seam binding ribbon. And you can color this if you want. Like you could have definitely made it into a blue bow. I'm having a little bit of troubles here getting that because I'm not wanting to cut the bow, <laughs> like the, the ears. Okay, hang on, we're gonna get that. Okay, there, perfect. So last but certainly not least, diamonds are a girl's best friend, they say. And so we need to bling this up. And I'm gonna put a couple on the right-hand side over there. And now if you have the nails again, you can use them. But my trick, if you don't have nails, is grab your glue scissors. And this works really nicely, you can pick them up and then place them where you want them very nicely. So um, once you get them down, they generally don't like to move so well, so then you're kind of stuck with them. <laughs> so that's where that one's gonna stay. All right. Oh, girls, it took us a little bit to get here, but we got here and we made our first fun fold for tonight. I just saying hello, a Z fold card. So boom, <laughs> one done, <laughs> I love it. Oh, <laughs> take a deep breath, right? Okay. So that completes our first card. The next card that we're going to make looks like, let's grab it, it's this one right here. So this is along the same color lines. So again, it's the Knight of Navy and the, let's grab it here, the Knight of Navy Roco Rococo Rose. Um, I threw in some Blushing Bride. I'm just putting this card back and it's plastic. So um, this one is a pocket fold. So this little piece of paper pulls out like this, um, or the cardstock pulls out, and you can you can even add some more white along the back here. If you wanted to write that full, you could also put some more on the back. Um, we're gonna be using the stapler tonight to get this card put together, and um, it features some of the DSP. And I hear I pulled in some of the, the lace ribbon from the Bird Ballad. It used to be the Bird Ballad Sweep, but um, they retired the Bird Ballad Sweep, but they kept this lace ribbon and the dies and the stamps. So let me grab my kit real quick for you girls, and we'll get going on this one. I have a lot of the bits and parts done already as well. So there is a little bit, because this is a fun fold, there is a little bit of, I'll tell you some measurements here. So the, the blue here, this is Night of Navy. That's uh, eight and a half by five and a half. Now it's scored in the middle first. This is at four and a quarter. So let's flip it this way. So we have it at four and a quarter, which is the middle, but then also at one and a half. And I don't know if you can see the fold line so good, but what's gonna happen is this is gonna fold in half and we're gonna burnish the edges. Oh, tweezers, yeah, that one's not so good. They fling it all over, you are so right. <laughs> okay, then we have um, one and a half, and then this is gonna get folded back like this. Okay, so girls, this Knight of Navy with the Rococo Rose is one of my new favorite color combinations. So I'm making some thank, some thank you cards 
for a friend of mine um, for a memorial and I chose these color combinations for the thank you cards. They're just soft and soothing. Okay, so we have here a piece of designer series paper that is five and a quarter by one and a quarter and that's gonna go here. This piece of navy is one and a quarter by five and a quarter and that's gonna be the piece that goes up here. In your kit, you also received a die cut from this label. This label is part of the dies and so it's this one right here. Now this wood DSP is part of the suite and the good things in life are better with you. That is a stamp from this as well. The, the Rococo rose here measures four and seven eighths by four and then the white is four and five eighths by three and three quarters and that's gonna get put on here like that. Now this, you girls, you know I love my greenery. So this is from the Flourishing Dyes and this is another horn set. So we're gonna use the horn here. Now everybody in your kit either got a full one or a half of one. I only used a half of one here. It was it was plenty with it. So you, I think my first kits that I mailed out earlier this week, I think everybody got a half. And then this is the from the greenery set. That'll go back there. So everybody got that die cut. Now I have a little scrap of white paper in your kits for those that got my online class. And what I did was I stamped the flower. Now if you have other, ha, I told you I would do it. Uh, it's a feather, it's a feather. So I, uh, I, if you have a different feather at home, that's perfect. So if you don't have this one, it's okay. Now in class last night, some girls went really detailed and they made this look super cool by going all the way in. And they take, they took the notches out. I'll tell you girls, that's a little tedious for me. Like, it looks super cool. They did a really good job on their cards. Like they went in and they, they bossy cut the heck out of this feather. But I'll tell you, I'm not that picky with the feather. I can live with it <laughs> more rounded. And I, I'll be honest with you, I did not cut the bottom because that actually gets covered up. So there was no way in heck I was gonna color cover, <laughs> cut that tail out. So, so we've got the feather. So let me show you how we put the card together. Um, there's This is already prepped, so almost everything's prepped. We do have one thing to stamp. So actually, let's get that stamped. This little piece right here uses those blocks. They look like little Hershey's bars. So it again, it pulls in the Rococo rose, which is the same that we used on the last one. And where do we have them? Right here. So um, Kathy, to your point, I do not need the foam mat for this. So I'm just gonna grab a little scratch paper. Uh, so I don't stamp all over my tile here. And this is at first strength and second strength. And I know it's probably really hard to see from there, but I've got it two-tone. I like the two-tone look going on. So I did one of them up here. And then to get the second strength, I stamp off. And then what I did is I stamped at second strength right underneath it, just to give it a little bit more character. So that was it for that. Again, I've stamped the sentiment in the Knight of Navy already, so that's done. So for this, what we can do is flip this over and we're gonna glue this one onto the Rococo Rose piece and then that part will be done. And have you girls ever made a pocket card like this before? I will tell you that my gal, Kathy Miller, she's a sideline of mine, she makes fun fold cards and this is, I believe she did this one in the past she does a lot of pocket cards, and so I got this idea from her. I'm thinking that's what I did. <laughs> so, okay, so let's use, okay, so I just grabbed any stapler. This is my stapler I've probably had for 20 years. Now, it's important that you staple it, you think backwards, because you want the smooth side out. You don't want the jaggedy edge um, out, otherwise it catches. So you would think to staple it like this, but if you do that, that's gonna give you the jaggedy edges out here. So what I'm gonna do is flip this over and I'm gonna staple it from the back and I have to guess. So everybody's staplers are different. So when I open this up, my stapler, the it staples really close to the edge here. So that's something to keep in mind. So Kathy, you're gonna have to try a pocket card sometime. So my goal is to, to staple this right in this general area here because then the flap is gonna cover it up. So I am gonna kind of eyeball it from the side here so that I don't go too close or too far in and that I don't go too far up. And so I think I'm good, right? Oh man, I was so close to the edge. We're gonna do that over. It was right on, <laughs> it was on the edge. Okay, we're gonna try that again. 
So we're gonna go right there. Okay, so that's plenty. So that is about a good eighth of an inch in, and it allows my flap to go over it. So we gotta do the same thing on this side. So I'm gonna go right about there. <laughs> it's like, shut your eyes and go. So um, that's okay too. Now I did staple this one higher than this one. Nobody between here and Milwaukee's ever gonna notice that. So we're good. <laughs> that's what my mom said to me a lot this weekend when it came to painting. So she's like, nobody between here and Milwaukee's ever gonna see that when they're driving by. <laughs> like, yes, mom, you're right. <laughs> so just learn to live with it, right? So hi, Kathy, Will Snack, thanks for joining. So this guy, this is the, the designer series paper that has the, I don't know, what is this pattern called, girls? I guess I don't know what, there's like, it's not paisley. It's a cool pattern though. That's gonna just get put down here at the bottom. Now, you could have cut a piece that filled up the whole area, but why waste the designer series papers um, if you're not, if it's gonna be covered up? So the blue section, um, no, so Sue, I have the measurements here. So this was just an eight and a half, by five and a half piece of paper. It was just your normal card base and it was scored right in the middle here. It was scored at four and a quarter. The only other thing I did is I scored it at one and a half. So bring it in one and a half and that's gonna be your flap down. Now, you could have done that at one inch too. You could have done it at a little bit more. It's really like how, how you want it to look. Um, so, so that was it. This designer series paper was one and a quarter by five and a quarter. And then my little piece of navy here. So you can see I've already embossed that with the Tasteful Textiles dies. Now that's going to get put on that little layer. Now there is this, this is the lace ribbon from, it's like three eighths inch lace scallop trim. Everybody did it a little bit differently yesterday in class. And, um, the ribbon doesn't fray. Sometimes ribbon has a tendency that it likes to fray. And then I would consider not doing this, but some people wanted to wrap their edges around. So this is actually coming out from underneath here. And I uh, I don't know, I think I took my tear and tape <laughs> the other day when I was working on stuff. So what I am gonna do, and I would normally put a whole line of tear and tape here, but just we're gonna work with the glue dots tonight and we're just gonna go through a lot of glue dots. So yes, my mom gives the best advice. I can't lie, I'm very lucky. My mom is a very smart lady and she tries to teach me things <laughs> and I, I try to be like a little sponge and soak it all in. So I'm gonna see if this is gonna work. So what I'm trying to do is just get the lace so that it is going to, it's gonna peek out the edge here just like that. And then what I'm gonna do is take and just trim this off. Now, again, I said that I'm only doing this because this ribbon does not fray. You ha you can not really do that if ribbon frays because it'll just it'll be a hot mess of ribbon. So the other thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put just a couple more on the top so that it helps. Because I noticed on that one, it was starting to come apart. So I wanna make sure I don't like it when ribbon wants to fall off or paper comes apart. So. Uh, and again, I would have generally put a piece of tear and tape over that. So now what can happen is this is going to go right on the top of this. And the lacy edge where the line is goes on the bottom. Okay, so let's grab that. And we're going to put, you know what, girls? I'm just being overly cautious with my glue dots right now. <laughs> so we're just going to get it good. We're going to pickle it and put it down. Okay, so that's going to get positioned right on here like that. And so, so far so good. And now this flap right here, we need to make sure that that gets secured down. And I'm going to use liquid glue. I would have used tear and tape again, but because I don't have any in front of me, we're just gonna go like that. Now the staples, they're just, it's gonna be a little bit bumbly there and that's okay. This comes down and just give it a second because I used the liquid glue. It's gonna need a second to kind of adhere. So we've got the base kind of done now, and this is the Rococo Rose with the Whisper White. That should tuck in there very nicely. Now, the one thing that's gonna happen is if you staple yours too far in, like let's say you would have gone in another eighth of an inch on each side, yours is gonna be a really tight fit and it's not gonna move in and out so nicely. It's gonna be a tighter fit. 
So you might have to trim off some of your Rococo rose or take the staple out and just do it over. Okay, so we have here the, um, the label and then we've got all this stuff kind of tucking out the side of it. So let me show you how I put this together. I, again, would have used tear and tape. <laughs> Girls, I'll stop saying that because I sound like a broken record now. So I, it would have gone right there. So instead, what we're going to do is put it on this one there. And so this is about, and I, you can see here too, I did not center this on the card. If I would have centered this, that would have been going off the edge. And I didn't really want that going off the edge too much. And I didn't, I just, I want it on there like that is pretty much it. So let's just put that there and get that kind of snug on there. So this will be right about here. And now we have a feather that's popping out here. So I like to dimensionalize the end. So that has a little bit of height to it. And you have to be careful because um, you don't want it sticking like to this area here. This has to be loose and not hitting this card back here. So I'm actually gonna bring that down a little bit just so that it doesn't get onto the card, uh, the card that comes in and out. So we're gonna look at this and just eyeball that feather going like that maybe. Something like that. Now if this needs to, so for you girls at home, you can just cut that off like that so that it doesn't come out the end. Okay. Now this guy, so for the girls that got the kits from me early on, like the first batch, everybody got a half because that's really all I used in here was just this one like that. I felt like that was enough. And then the people that are getting kits from me that are that missed class, I just felt like cutting a full one, you get a full one. But I thought it was a little bit too full if you had the full one. And so that's why I just gave everybody the half. So we're just gonna kind of wing this and see how that looks. And we're gonna pull that out just a hair and then it should be good to go, girls. <laughs> this not having um, <laughs> my tear and tape is killing me. So uh, <laughs> work with me, work with me. Okay, right about there. So this guy here, he's popped up with dimensionals. And again, be careful not to put a dimensional too high. You can see on this card, I got super close to the edge. I got far enough without going over, like on the price is right. So I did good. <laughs> I won the prize at the end. So that was good. You remember the price is right had that little, um, the mountain climber and he would climb to the end of the mountain. And if you guessed the wrong price, your little hit, your little mountain climber went over the edge and you lost. <laughs> Do you guys remember that? Oh, I wonder if they still have that on. So, all right, that is what's going to go over here. Like so, so did you notice that the pieces of wood are slightly different? Do you see how the this one is a little more brown and this one's a little more yellow? That is actually the same piece of designer series paper. So again, within the piece of paper, there's different variations of color. So some of you might have gotten one more like that and some of you may have gotten one more like that. So. And then last but not least, we've got a little bit of pearl action going on. Scissors, Kathy, yep, we're gonna do this so they don't fly all over. I gave everybody three pearls in their kits. I got this one, ooh, the glue stayed there actually. Let's get that back on there. We're gonna put one little guy right over there. And let's see here, we're gonna put one more. Ooh, that one, the glue came off too. Let's get that back on there, girls. This glue on the back of these little uh, pearls, you gotta be careful. You gotta grab it from underneath, otherwise it stays there. So that one's gonna go right there. Okay, woohoo, yippee skippy. We did it. <laughs> we survived card number two. Now, I opened up a brand new Stella for you girls tonight and we're gonna use her. So I would have definitely done this before I assembled the card, but because I did it and I'm doing it after, now I'm not gonna Stella the parts that aren't seen and waste Stella. So I am gonna tuck behind here and get some of these. So that's a good thing about Stella in your card very at the very end, is you just add it to the parts that you wanna add it to at the end. So there we go, you girls like it, yay. All right, I saw some thumbs up. So, okay girls, we got card number two done. And you can see here, I, I put my flower, or my flower, I did it again. I put my feather going off a different direction. So um, it's, it's however you want to see it. So, 
All right. Card number numero dos is done. Finito. All right. Boom. On to whiskey business, girls. Oh, here. Let me show you this card. I made this card using a different sentiment. This is sending positive thoughts and feel good wishes. And that is from Nature's Thoughts, I think. That's the name of that set. Okay. Whiskey business. Whiskey business. How many of you girls are whiskey drinkers? I'll tell you, I'm not really a whiskey drinker. <laughs> so I can't appreciate this card like some, some others might, but I thought it was very nice. <laughs> so we are going to do this and we'll show you how I put it together and what we used. So let's get our little metallic pearls out. And I am going to grab my little... I've got these already stamped, so those are ready to go. And the stamp set is called Whiskey Business. So out of here, I used the jar of booze and the booze on the rocks. <laughs> and you could have, um, if you have the set, you could do either sending you an old fashioned birthday card or straight up, you're the best. So uh, that's where this comes from. Now there are not dies for this stamp set. So there is a little bit of the fussy cutting to do. So Kathy is into gin and tonic. I'm not, I don't think I could get into that. Um, so Sandy, you've never made a pocket card. I'm excited that now you know what it's all about. So I would love for you to post pictures on my Facebook page when you make it. That would be awesome. So, okay. This one is a more, a little more simple girls. This one, I know you can handle this one. So basic black. I didn't score <laughs> because sometimes I do and sometimes I don't for myself. Uh, when you don't score your paper, you just have to be a little bit better about lining up your corners. Make sure you grab your bone folder and then burnish your edges. So the card is going to open like this. So it's important that we remember that. We have an inside here and then that'll go for the, the inside mat. Now this designer series paper is part of the set. It looks different. It's just, it looks like a big blanket to me that is old and worn. <laughs> and I thought though it worked perfectly with the grays. So the size of this DSP, it's two inches by five and a quarter. So I did it at two inches to maximize that I could get six of them out of um, one column on a piece of 12 by 12. So that's going to go there. This is a piece of smoky slate. The smoky slate is four and three quarters by two and three quarters. And Look at this embossing. That is called Dainty Diamonds. Dainty Diamonds is actually part of the Peony Suite. So if you're in the catalog and you're looking at the whole prized Peony collection, that I embossed, let's see here if you can see it on here, I embossed the Designer Series paper with this folder. So this is one of the cards for the monthly class next week. So this is called Dainty Diamonds, I'll tell you. Um, it, uh, it, it's awesome. So Kathy's asking, does it feel textured? Um, this paper, I think that you're asking about the paper. This paper is not textured whatsoever. It looks like this on the back side, so it pulls in the navy, and it's just a completely smooth piece of paper. It doesn't have any glitter or like foil, no fal like velvet. There's nothing. It's just a piece of flat designer series paper. Now the gray has a lot of texture to it because I just embossed it. I didn't just do it. <laughs> I did it a while back, but this is embossed with the dainty diamonds. And so that's going to go down there and uh, we can already glue that down. So when I'm cutting my paper, I very well could have cut this down a little bit further, but I decided not to because that is going to get covered up anyways right here. And two and three quarters times four is 11. So the, you can get four. So for those that like to make multiple cards, two and three quarters is a good number because you get four of them out of an 11 inch piece of paper. So instead of cutting more paper and wasting it by get being covered up, that's why I cut it at two and three quarters. So just think about that when you're making layers and mats for your cards. If stuff is generally going to be covered up all the time, just it's sometimes just easy to not have that paper that tall or long. So this, what I'm doing is I'm eyeballing my top, my left, and my right. And I want to make sure that they're about the same and equidistant all the way around. And that just gets glued down. The same with the designer series paper. That is the two by five and a quarter. 
I'm just gonna put a little bit of liquid glue all the way around that. Yes, so Kathy, that Dainty Diamonds embossing folder doesn't do much until you see it in action and it looks super cool. So now on the bottom here, what I'm trying to do is match up my bottom, my left and my right, to each be about an eighth of an inch. And so it kind of looks like a pocket card. It kind of looks like this is like tucked underneath there. So that's the designer series paper getting put on. Now I have just a basic black. It kind of looks, I tried to make it look like there was a tablecloth and this is sitting on a table. I'm, girls, when I design cards, I try to like look for the reality in things, I guess is maybe the word for it and that it actually makes sense. <laughs> so, so in my head, this was a table and it was sitting on the table and two people were socializing and they were clinking their glasses together and they were cheersing to a good night. <laughs> Really, that's how crazy I am with my thoughts. So I'm like, yep, this is what's happening. So <laughs> I make up a story as I go. So now what I'm doing is I'm allowing about a quarter of an inch along the bottom here. Perfect. So this little guy here, this label is part of the suite now. So that is that one right here. So if you recall from the paper pumpkin class a couple weeks ago, they featured these labels. So this one's gonna go here. I've got my metallic pearls. So for those of you that are interested, there's these awesome metallic pearls. There's gold and there are silver ones. And on the monthly class next week, I use the gold ones. And on this card, I use the silver ones. So you get a sheet of each of them. They make the most cute little ornaments for on Christmas trees, little silver and gold balls. All right, so here I've got this stamped ready. The colors that I use for coloring are uh, the balmy blue in the light. I use the so saffron in the dark, and I use daffodil delight in the dark. So, if you look at the card, you can you think, "Wow, it looks antique and weathered," but you would never guess it's balmy blue. But it really is. So, what I've got here, I've already colored one by the magic of TV. One's colored already, but I thought I'll color. Um, some here for you. What I try to do is I took the thin end of the balmy blue, the light one, and I'm just coloring slightly on like the ice cube here and then also where they're shading down the glass. So the edge of the glass I went down and then along the bottom here I colored this blue. Now it does, it dries a little bit lighter so it doesn't dry like looking so crazy like blue. Then on the jar here for the this old time jar, I colored the the areas that had lines on them. And when you color over them, the blue kind of fades by the dark coming through. So I kind of just followed the, those lines through here. So just a couple like that. And then you gotta be careful when you color down, uh, you gotta go all the way to the bottom here. And I just went straight down the edges. Okay, so that's what I did to make the glassware look aged. Okay, then I have here I started with the light saffron. So I generally work lighter colors. Um, this way I, I work lighter colors. Normally I do the opposite actually, but in this case I didn't want to over color with dark. So I picked a couple spots. So if you look at this card closer up, you can see there's a little bit of lightness in a couple areas here. So I wanted to make sure that I got those areas. And so I have those now. <laughs> look what I did here. I did not pay attention and I colored that little bit of yellow up because <laughs> I was following that line and I was like, oopsie, I guess I shouldn't have gone over the top of the, the level of the alcohol. So I learned my lesson and for this one now I'm not going to do that. So I'm just picking a few little areas here where I'm going to leave them this lighter yellow color. So that's all I did. And then with the dark yellow, I'm going to do all the rest of the area here. And I'm gonna be careful not to go too far over my yellow, the lighter yellow. And I'm even leaving a little bit of edge there not colored so greatly. So then here on this one, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna try not to go over my yellow area so much. And you're gonna be like, well, that looks really distinct. Like, I don't like the lines on that, but that's okay. We're gonna follow back with the lighter yellow and we're gonna blend it. So these are alcohol markers that are meant for blending. And in this case, it was really good to start with the, the lighter yellow. So now what I'm gonna do is grab and go back to the lighter yellow and I'm gonna blend over the top 
and so that the lighter yellow stays the lighter yellow but it's going to fill in the gaps with the dark and blend it nicely so so you still have a little bit of the lighter area there and there's still a little lighter there and there okay and the same with this i'm going to go over the top of this really softly and it left the ice cube kind of made the ice cube look like it was a little bit lighter there okay so that's all i did for coloring now for you at home if you have these stamps fabulous good like great you rocked it and you got the stamps right away so um now if you don't have these stamps at home you got these kits from me find something else that will look nice on here go through your manly man stamps and see if there's something out there that you can use that would give you a really cool looking card uh that's the hard part about if you don't have the exact same stamps as being creative now I don't generally fussy cut in front of you but because the magic of TV is really nice. But I wanted to show you that, yep, yeah, they don't have a set of dies for this stamp set, but you still can definitely cut these out and it's not, it's a lot of straight lines. So that's what's awesome about that. And this one, I have one popped up. So we're going to put, I'm actually going to use four dimensionals on this one like that. And the other one's going to go flat. So I'm just prepping that so that it's ready to go. And then this one too, girls. Like, it's like, it's so funny. Tyler said to me one day that a couple, a gal walked out of class, uh, and this was a couple months ago. A gal walked out of class and he said, oh, well, how did it go? And my customer said, I don't know who it was. He didn't know who it was. She said, she was really mean to us. She made us fussy cut and she made us color. And so <laughs> I try not to make you guys have to do both of that, those things in the same class. But last night, it was a lot of fussy cutting, and it was a lot of, not so a lot, but there was enough coloring. So hi, Katie. Thanks for joining. Hope you're doing good tonight. We're just making our third card from the In Good Taste class, and I am boring you to death with my, my fussy cut action here. So I got this little section right here to do, and then we are ready to rock and roll and get on our bikes and ride. Okay, there we go. So I have one more card that I need to put together. That's why I have another one ready to go there. All right, so let's get back to this one. So now we have our jar ready to go and I'm gonna use dimensionals for that. So let's grab a couple of those. And I always try to use my blue scissors, scissors for that. So this is where, <laughs> oh Mary, you like to fussy cut. Wow, you go girl. <laughs> all I know is that it was about 20 years ago and they did not have all these really cool die cutting machines and embossing folders and I make Christmas cards for my mom I make about 100 cards for my mom that she sends out and I do about 50 for myself and whatever card I designed it needed something like that fussy cut we made a hundred of them and I have no appreciation for fuzzy cutting since then. <laughs> I don't mind like this little bit, what we just did, but I could never sit down and do it for hours on end. It makes my hand hurt. Ever since that day, I feel like I've never been able to fussy cut in the same way. <laughs> so more power to you, Jean. That's awesome. Mary Jean, that is awesome. So, okay, I'm doing the label here next because I want to make sure that I don't put my glasses up too high. And let's get the dimension. So I might have over dimensionalized this, but that's okay. <laughs> so this one's gonna go right about here. So I'm trying to center it between the smoky slate top and the bottom, and I left myself a little margin there. Now the bottom one here, that will get glued flat. And that one goes on first with a little bit of glue. And then we'll put the other one right next to it. And I did put that one flat and I raised this one up so that it looks like it's sitting in front of it. They're clinking their glasses. And then we've got these baby metallic pearls. Again, these work really good if you use your scissors. Now, there was a little bit of just um, controversy at class last night because I only used two of them. Generally, I use three, but in this case, I only used two. I'm curious what you girls think. I need a vote. 
Are you okay with two pearls on each side or does there need to be another pearl random somewhere? So last night, somebody I think put a, a pearl, I think Bonnie put a pearl up there. So, <laughs> and that's okay. It's, everybody has their own taste and they do the, how they want it. So, okay, um, I will plan to color this a little bit in two, a little bit later. And then, um, but I can glue this. So this one, straight up, you're the best. You could make this into a birthday card. You could make it into a thank you card. It could be a thinking of you card. It really could be anything. So we're gonna glue that on the inside here. And that means that card number three is good to go. All right, how did you like that one? <laughs> It is definitely a man card. Girls, it was crazy. I had these two cards on the board at the same time and people were like, wow, you don't have flowers up. <laughs> yes, I definitely agree, Katie. I think that two are good in this case as well. So that's what I went with. All right, so another pearl to the left front of the glass. That is next to the decanter. Okay, that's where Kathy votes for three pearls then. Okay, interesting. So that's just it. Everybody's got their own personal preference. Okay, we got three done, girls. On to number four. Definitely saved. Um, I think this one was my favorite. This one, I just love the flowers and the mint and crumb cake with the blushing bride i just there's a lot going on but it's a fun pretty card to me very soft so let's get this one underway here and we can keep going with our night all right i feel like my neighbor is outside cutting grass right now and i wonder if you guys can hear it <laughs> oh. so here we have our crumb cake it is our eight and a half by five and a half and we're just gonna fold that in half like that and then don't forget to burnish your edges. All right, so this again is crumb cake. We have an inside mat. The inside mat measures four by five and a quarter and we're gonna stamp on that in a little bit. So pretty a card you are. I know, Kathy, I love this card. It, made me, it makes me happy. Mary Merlot, that also is just your traditional mat. It's four by five and a quarter. So that's just gonna go like that. Oh good, you can't hear my neighbor cutting grass. Okay, good. I hear it in the distance and I'm like, oh, I wonder if they can hear it. Okay, then I have here a piece of, this is the designer series paper that's in the In Good Taste. And that goes like that. And then this one goes like that. And then I have a little, oh, so this piece right here, um, this designer series paper, I cut it at, three by three and 13 sixteenths, okay? A little bit of it does get covered up and that's okay. The piece of Blushing Bride is three and 13 sixteenths um, by, ooh, I don't know, two and three quarters, I'm guessing, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that. And then this is this really pretty petal pink. Um, it's the organdy ribbon. This was a carried over too from the annual catalog from last year. It is organdy striped ribbon in petal pink and that's gonna go right here, so that's ready. So oh, girls, here it is. <laughs> it made another appearance. My One of my favorite dyes. These are those, the Forever Greenery dyes. And I used this one for the mint here, and then I used a little bit of vellum with that one right there, okay? So everybody got those die cut. This little label here is um, in many things. I have, but in class, people could pick from itty bitty greetings so they could put whatever sentiment that they wanted depending on what kind of card they wanted to make. Now the die though from this, this is actually from the In Good Taste dies. So I pulled in, so every one of the cards used a die from that set. So that's gonna go there. We've got this ready. Let's do some stamping though, girls. So we have here, everybody in your kit, you got two pieces like this, okay? They are for the flowers. So in this case, I am going to grab my piercing mat. Those flowers, they come from a stamp set called Floral Essence. And we're using just one flower out of here. This carried over from the annual catalog as well. And there is a matching punch for it. 
So here's the punch. And so remember when you use a punch, you always wanna look at the back of it so that you punch it out properly. Or so you stamp it properly so that it makes it for easy punching or punching out. All right, so we need to grab Mary Merlot. I don't use very much of Mary Merlot. It's a very pretty, it's a neutral color. It's actually in the neutrals family. So uh, I just, I don't pull it out, but it mixes really nice with the blushing bride. Okay, let me get all my scissors out of the way. All right, so this little guy though, you have to do four of them. So at home for people who got the kits, you gotta just find a flower, something, everybody's got flowers at home. I know that they do. So I think I even punched out all four flowers for you and I gave you enough paper in case you wanted um, to stamp and then punch them out. So I think that I thought, well, what happens if they have the stamp and the punch? Then, then I gave them, yeah, I gave you guys a piece of paper. And if um, you don't have the stamps, then you could work with the punches because I can give you punched out things. So um, you could even draw your own little lines. Like if you have a reddish marker, you could draw the outline and then fill it in yourself. So we have four of those. Now on the inside, I actually did some of those as well. So watch what I do here. It's photopolymer. So it's super easy to stamp this with it being photopolymer. I'm gonna stamp one there. And then because you can see through here completely, you can get it lined up pretty good. <laughs> so there you go. So we had a flower that was really hard to do with not too long ago. And I had the hardest time lining it up. I think it's like the daisy one. So I, um, this one's many thanks, but if you wanted to, you could, if you wanted happy birthday, this wishing you the best year yet is from a stamp set that's called best year. And I don't think I have it here with me right now, but I think that's it for stamping. Hi, Sue. Hi, Cheryl. Thanks for joining. So that's it for that stamping. Now we also have, if you look in the middle of this card though, there's a little bit of sponging going on. So earlier we used this sponge for doing the blue. That's called a Stampin' Sponge. This is called a sponge dauber. And what I'm gonna do is dip into my Mary Merlot pad. I always like to start by going a little bit off and then you can go and pull out some of the color from the middle. Okay, so that's super cool. Hi Elaine, thanks for joining again. The other thing you could do is you could use your Stella. Stella is really great at making things bleed. So you never want to do this when you don't want color all over the place. Like if I would go to color this, it would just go all over. So I'm being strategic about how I how I place my Stella on here. I'm drawing the lines out to make them look like they're, they bled out. So, <laughs> so that's how that looks. Okay, so that's the inside. And now let's see, I'll put that over there. We're going to do this to these guys. So this is just Stella alone. I'm gonna show you the difference. Maybe we'll do the tops one way and we'll do the bottoms the other way. So this is just using your Stella pen and pulling the color out, okay? So when you're done using that, you wanna just kind of wipe it out a little bit. Otherwise, you'll have color in there for the next time. Now, this is where the sponge dauber works. And what you'll do is dip in here and then it gets a little bit more color than the Stella pen. And you're just going to, and don't worry that I'm going outside of the lines, we're gonna punch these out. So all good in the hood. Okay. All right, so that's a little bit of the Mary Merlot. And I think we're done with it now. So now here's our punch. To open up punches, the little lever that's here gets pushed away from you and then that opens this up. And to shut it, you squeeze it and bring it back towards you. So we're gonna open this up and then we're going to punch out the four of them and just gotta line it up like so. Okay, so then this is garbage. And so those were the two that were sponged and then these are the two that were Stella. And, oh man, I gotta go up a little higher. <laughs> I'm not picky at all, girls. <laughs> Tyler would be like, oh yes you are. Okay. So there's that one, punch is done. And what we're gonna do is, let's move the yellow off the side. So the reason I like to put the yellow on here is you can see when you're stamping on white paper very easily. So we have these 
and we're going to connect these with glue dots. So I'm going to put this one in between. So glue dots. You girls know I meant dimensionals. So <laughs> you can read my mind, right? So this one goes on here like that. And if you want to, grab your bone folder. Hi, Bobby. And you can just curl the edges a little bit like that. Bobby, you have a kit coming to you. You also have some designer series paper coming. And uh, I was waiting for a box because I have not really ever shipped 12 by 12 paper to anybody. So I finally got a Stampin' Up! order today. I waited all week for it. And I think I have the, a good box to mail your 12 by 12 paper in. If it would have been an eight and a half by 11, uh, I would have been set, but I, I needed a bigger box. So I have a big box for you and I'll have to figure out, I'll probably send it priority, just so you know, side note, and I'll let you know how much that is so that we are good to go. All right, so now our flowers are prepped here. So same thing here. I'm gonna Stella, where's my Stella? Here she is. I'm gonna Stella this before I put it together because then it's all pretty complete. And the mint as well. So this one, I'll set this off to the side so it can dry. And then we're gonna pull this one in here and Stella this. It's, you only need, two, okay, watch this. You're gonna need three sections from this. This was like the same thing as the catalog launch party cards. You're gonna need this one for here. And then I believe it's this side. So for those at home that have these kits, you gotta cut this leaf apart. And this is the one that I used there, okay? So now if you want to, you could add more in there, completely up to you. I thought it looked good with the little that it had and I didn't add that third chunk to it, but you definitely, instead of throwing it away, you could add it to it. And maybe we'll look at it and see if it looks good adding it somewhere else. So here I'm stelling this. Girls, you're proud of me. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome, Bobby. <laughs> so I uh, let's get some assembly stuff going on here. So this designer series pa pa paper is gonna go down first. And so I'm just putting a little liquid glue behind that. And that's gonna go here first and then hi Kathy back um, we're gonna glue the blushing bride piece and that's gonna go over the top edge of the designer series paper and just line up the bottom as long as you cut them both at 3 and 13 16 they should be good oh girls I don't have my tear and tape again so you know what we're gonna pull out the stamp and seal why not? Let's see how good this works. I haven't used it in a little while, so let's see. Okay, there we got some. There we got some. So now you're going to take your petal pink, and what I did is I took the top edge and I put it right to the top edge of the Blushing Bride. So then flip your tails over so they attach on the back, hopefully, <laughs> if you get the tape in the right spot. That's important stuff, right? Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit more <laughs> right there so that sticks. All right, now a little bit of liquid glue, and we're going to put this onto our card base. Next. Thanks, Kathy. Appreciate that. This one, I think, is my favorite. I love flowers, and I love these colors together, so I think I'm going to... I saved my favorite one for last, girls. Okay, so now our base is ready to go. Now you're wondering like, okay, well, how do you put all this, the shenanigans together? Like there's just a lot going on, <laughs> right? Okay, so first I started with um, this one, this the, the cardstock vellum here. This is gonna get tucked and put right about here. So what I'm gonna do for that is I'm gonna put a glue dot right at the stem base here. And I'm gonna gently pull up my ribbon so that I can tuck that into there. And it's gonna kind of nestle up in the corner at a diagonal like that, okay? So that's easy, easy peasy, as Kelly would say. Then this one right here is going to be partly coming up like that, while this one comes down like so, okay? And you don't want that tucked all the way up there because we're gonna have to make sure our little label fits and you want you want some of it coming out like that. So I've kind of got them 
setting where I want them to go. So I'm going to put glue dot. <laughs> Girls, I am glue dot happy tonight. We're gonna put this one right over the top of that there. And then we're going to put another one on the top of that there. And I'm gonna stuff more security behind them, but for now I'm just trying to get them kind of placed where I think I want them. Okay, good deal. This guy right here, I'm gonna put some dimensionals. And let's see here, I got baby ones left. Yes, I have one here. And let's see here. Oh, I got a whole sheet brand new of little babies. This one's gonna go here like that. Okay, so I put this pretty close to the edge over on the right hand side. Thanks, Cheryl, I appreciate that. And then this is gonna go I have it right on the bottom edge of the petal pink ribbon. And I'm not squishing it down really hard right now because I may have to move it or I may have to stuff stuff under it. You have, everybody got wood elements. So one side of the wood element is a little bit smoother and not as decorated. The other side looks like it has a burnished, like it's like got darkness to it. So I, because I have Stella, you can Stella everything, girls. I have one of my friends, Connie, had a dress with rhinestones on it, and she wanted them sparklier, and she was going to an event, and so she took her Stella pen, and she Stella'd all the rhinestones on her dress, okay? And don't be afraid to use Stella wherever you need her. She comes in handy. So what I'm doing is putting a glue dot on the back of the wood element right at the base here, and I'm actually going to wait. Hang on. Hold up. Getting ahead of myself. I want to put this one on next, the flower. So I'm putting two dimensionals that are small. If you had the bigger ones, you'd get by with one. And this is going to go, I'm trying to nestle so I cover up that edge there like that. And then one more here and get a couple dimensionals on that one. And this one's going to nestle. Let's see how we're going to do this. Because my many thinks, I think, oh, we got to remember our feather is going to go here. So we're going to put that, I'm trying to get it lined up. So like the petal kind of just peeks right down and creates a nice little border for it. And then um, because this is going to pop up, we're going to add another dimensional there. Okay, glue dot behind the feather right here. And I think we're gonna do one more just for good measure at the top. And you're gonna tuck the feather so that its little tail is behind the sentiment. And that's gonna get nestled in there. Our flower petal can go over the top. And then this one, we're gonna have this one come out the bottom here at a diagonal. Just kind of wedge that underneath in there. All right, now, it's kind of flimsy and it's a little floppy, okay? That's okay. We're gonna secure it a little bit better. So first of all, I really wanted to try just to get it set where I liked everything. Hi, Jean, I hope you're doing good. I hope Tom is good. Um, and we're gonna put one over here. And so that's gonna secure that flower a little better. Now this up here was a little floppy as well. So grab your glue dot. And this is where the scissors comes in great. So grab your glue scissors and get that dimensional on the end. And it's like scalpel. We're doing surgery here, girls. Get that glue dot in there good. And now let's see here. Is that good? That one's good. This is a little floppy here. So we're going to grab another dimensional and put that down. So that's kind of secure. And then we got one more over here on this side. And we're going to put this one right there. And now squish it dead. Okay, there you go. Whew, that's how that came together, right? Okay, now glab. Okay, so on this card, I put a little one up here and I put two little ones down there. So we're gonna do a dot of liquid glue, dot, dot, not a lot. And then one more right there. And grab your scissors for this endeavor. It's easier to pick these little guys up with the scissors and to place them. So get that right up where you want it and squish it down. And then let's grab these other guys. Same thing with these. <clears throat> they have a little bit of darkness on one side and they're lighter on the other side. So I grabbed a circle and two plus signs 
and this one's gonna go up there. I feel like a surgeon when I'm carrying my scissors like this. I've never been a surgeon. I wouldn't know if that's really how it feels, <laughs> but I feel like I'm gonna have surgery. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so I wanted to do something in the centers of these flowers, <sighs> but like um, a so saffron circle, like a half inch circle didn't look so good. Um, if I were you and you have those cute little jemmies that didn't carry over from the last catalog, they're, they were big and they were bubbly and they were clear. I think those would look amazing in there. So if you have those and you have this kit at home, you could definitely add something to the center of your flowers if you want. But if you like that, the card, the way it is like this, isn't it so pretty? Oh my goodness. I just like, ooh, and I ah over this card. Okay, picture it in purple or like blues, any other colors, but uh, it's just so cool. So we use, I love the, the Forever Greenery dies. If you girls don't have that, it's off of back order. Bobby, um, one of my team members, uh, Diane, she said that her dies just shipped. So you were asking about these dies if they're um, available. So if you ordered them, which you said you did, it should be coming soon. So, all right, girls. There we go. We got our our fourth card made. We made it through. Our technology did not disappoint for round two. <laughs> I wish I could marry my videos together. <laughs> Maybe that will be something I figure out how to do. <laughs> so let's get our inside glued in here. Um, so I have these four cards. I'm going to recap and show all four of them together for you. I got to get my inner glued in here real quick. I'm going to recap for you, show you all the four cards, and then I'm going to announce who the winners from last week's class are. I've had two cards that we made last week, and let's see here. Oh my gosh, we got them done. So here's one card that we made tonight. Uh, all right, there's one card. You're very welcome, Sandy. All right, here was the second card that we made. Let's make some room. Here is... A third card that we made and then we made another feminine florally card here that is a Z fold so and this one was a pocket fold so Kelly thank you so much I appreciate the kind comment so oh we made it through girls another Thursday Stampin Live <laughs> if you need anything from my online store I have the code right here don't look at this bottom one I uh, closed this workshop out and I started the next one here. So that's the code. If anybody does place uh, an online order for tonight that isn't signed up for the monthly class already, I have these three cards that um, I will be mailing out the kits on Monday for them. And so if you did place a minimum $35 order, this is the free gift. Uh, uh, for the, for that class. So then you can make cards with me next week. I think some of you who are making cards with me tonight, a Angela, were you able to get your cards done? I know that you said that it was freezing, um, but I'm curious if you got yours done. Okay, so then we have here two cards. These are the two cards I made last week with you. This is from the Sending You Sunshine set, and then this is from the Arranger Wreath set. And drum roll, brr, 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 <laughs> okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, the winner of this, a gal by the name of Randy Scholes. So I will announce that in last week's video. So if you're Randy, I don't know who you are, but your name was drawn. And um, you, I would love to send this card to you. This one, uh, drum roll, brrr, Julie Ledbetter. Uh, again, I don't have your address, Julie, but you won this pretty card, and I would love to get this in the mail to you. So I will get these announced in last week's uh, video so those people know that they won. Oh, thanks, Hillary, so much. Oh, okay. Angela, you said you got two pieces to glue on, and then you got your cards done. That is awesome. So oh, I know it's really hard. I I'll tell you, girls, sometimes if you get card kits and you don't get them done right away, they sit around for a little while and then you forget what, what what they're all about and how to put them together so it makes me feel good to know that when you get the card kits that you got your cards put together so you know what i should start doing you should have to start posting pictures of them on the page and then i should do a drawing because you know girls i just have another i need another reason to do a drawing and then people who submit their cards that they made from class i'll do a drawing at the end of well, like the beginning of the month 
and hopefully that would encourage people. Yay, Jennifer, you like the cards, good. Oh yes, congratulations to the winners. So how does that sound? Those people that get my online classes, would you be willing to submit your cards after you make them? And say, I want my name in for the drawing. <laughs> and then I gotta keep track of them. <laughs> and we'll do a drawing. <laughs> so, um, so yes. So Thursday next week is the monthly cards, which I just showed you. It's the duck, the hippo, and the peony. We'll be live at six. And I am gonna keep all my fingers and all my toes crossed that we do not have technological difficulties. I always shut down the pa the both technologies, I shut them down before class and I reboot so that they're fresh and they sync. <laughs> so oh, I try every time to make it so that it's seamless, but I can't control everything all the time. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> so, okay. So, so that's next week, Thursday, I guess. What is today? Today is the 13th. So the 20th. So August 20th, we'll be here live. Um, if you need anything from me in the interim, don't hesitate to reach out and ask. Um, Jennifer, I saw that your paper pumpkin shipped. So in a couple of weeks, we'll be doing the paper pumpkin live. And I don't even know what it is. Um, I haven't gotten mine yet. It just shipped like yesterday or the day before. So we'll be doing that in two weeks then. Um, then you can see our changes. Yes. So it's a great feeling, girls. I, I'm I feel like a proud stampin' mama. I don't know if there's any way to explain it, but I make cards. I don't always make them for myself. Like I get ideas off of Pinterest and other people. So yeah, so I just like you, I get inspired. And it's so fun to make cards for classes and then reproduce all the pieces and to see all of you make them into your own cards. And put your flair or your style on them. That is just so awesome. It just makes me feel good that I can help you girls be creative and crafty and inspire you to make awesome things. So, so yes. So Angela, I would love to see what you make <laughs> when you're done with your cards. That'd be awesome. So, all right. I announced the winners. Did I forget? It? Oh my gosh. Wait. Oh my goodness. Big shot. Oh my gosh. Okay, girls. I know that some of you left, but... I gotta flip this down. Look at this beautiful beast. Oh my gosh, look at this. It's the Stampin' Up, um, Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine. I just gotta show it to you really quick, okay? So it became available to demonstrators on Tuesday of last week. And it is very compact because the sides fold up and then they will fold down. So for carrying and storing, it, it's not as bulky. So these sides, they go and they, oh, they didn't do it, but they click generally like this. And I just did it really slow. And so when it opens up, it is the same size as the other big shot. It might be actually a hair longer. And um, the grip on here is awesome. The handle is the only thing you have to attach. There is a handle right here. It comes unattached and they give you a little Allen wrench to attach it just like the previous machine. Um, this folds up, it snaps, <laughs> and then underneath here, there's actually these little rubber feet, um, all four of them, and they actually help to keep this like grounded and not slipping all over the place. So there's little rubber feet on there. Um, it's just nice, compact little, um, I'm, girls, I'm so excited. The, this is going to look beautiful in the she shed. It's not like I'm all about looks when it comes to stuff, but this is going to look really pretty. <laughs> so the other thing is it comes with the plates and stuff. So I'm going to set this off to the side. And you can see here, it comes with a, 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 just a platform. So the other machine, and if you have any other kind of machine, they always have like a platform like this. So this is the platform and it's numbered number one. <laughs> and that goes on the bottom like that. Then there is a thin little plate here. It's the die plate and it's number two. So they've helped order it so that that would be on the, the, the next one. Then you have your plates. So these would be number three. So you would put, in this case, you would put your die down. So let's make the little sandwich to see. You would put your paper, you'd put your paper down like this. You'd put the die 
and then that. So that's your normal. Um, these plates are brand new. They're, <laughs> they've never been used. So that's your sandwich for that. Now, for those of you, and Kathy Jackson, I don't know if you're still watching, but this number four is for the embossing folders that are the dynamic textured folders. So if you know in the past they've had the blue plate, this is going to, I believe, replace the blue plate because the blue plate is no longer available. So when you're going to emboss, then you would put your, and we'll do this one because I want to show it to you. Grab a piece of paper and it goes in your folder like that. And then let's open this up and do it. Let's, why not, right? Okay, so this snaps down, that one snaps down. Now, you have to be careful. This goes down number one. You have to put your folder next. You do not want to put this on the top. It will like make your folder get warped. So this goes down next, and then this goes on top of it. There's actually more wiggle room here. If you look at this, you have a lot of space that you can go back and forth. The other machine was a little tighter, and it shaved off the edges of the, <laughs> the actual plates. And so this goes through here. just like this okay and that embossed the dainty diamonds so super cool so kathy you were asking when this gray plate will be available i think it's in september if i remember correctly i think it's supposed to be available in september so right now, this machine is available to demonstrators on a demonstrator order. Customers will be able to order it, I think, September 1st or September 4th. I can't remember if there was an exact date. It was early September. Now, if you have one of the regular embossing folders, one of those clear ones, not clear ones, like one of the thin ones, like the regular ones, then you would use the two clear plates with that thin folder in between it. So, so Kathy, yes. You're gonna wanna add this to your wish list when it is available because I know that there's a, quite a few people who have been ordering these new embossing folders that are the 3D ones and they need the right thickness being used for the plate. Otherwise, you gotta add shims to it and that's not fun, that's a lot of work. Nobody likes to have to work for their stamping, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's kind of how I feel about fussy cutting, you gotta work for it. All right, so, yay, right? So, if you are interested in getting one of these big shots right now, there is a way, if you're a customer and not a demonstrator, you're, and you want this now, I've had two people sign up to be on my team, actually, because you get for 120, so the machine is 120, and the starter kit is $125 worth of product for $99. So you would get to pick this machine and like a pack of pearls or a pack of rhinestones, those are $5. And then you get it for $99 plus tax, so it makes it like 104 and change, or depending on what your tax is. And there's no shipping either. So basically you're saving about $12.50 in shipping and you're getting a paper pumpkin as well. And um, yeah, then you get the opportunity to get 20% off all your future orders. So it's something to think about because if you are in the market for one of these and you need one, like signing up to become a demonstrator is a great way to do it. And then if you are a demonstrator, you can order this now and you get your 20% discount, which is awesome. It's your, your happy shopper discount. So um, yes, Kathy, the clear plates are the same size as the previous plates. The other thing I want to point out to you too, some of you girls have, I'm going to flip this down again. You have the make, look at this loved plate, <laughs> the, or, um, the, <laughs> <laughs> the magnetic platform, this like is loved. Okay, that's how many um, people will use this. This magnetic platform with these, like this is my cutting plate that is loved. You can tell it's loved. And then this is my top plate. This fits in here perfectly too with your dies. So the question came up, will the magnetic platform fit in the machine? 
So people who have your magnetic platforms previously, they will work in the new stamp and cut and emboss machine. So you can, you don't have to worry about getting a new magnetic platform. So that's pretty awesome. Um, the other thing too is it does come with a, a little pamphlet here with instructions in all different languages. So I didn't read it, but I'm sure that there's some good information in there. <laughs> if you find out something that's really beneficial to know, just let me know <laughs> so I can share it with everybody else. So, okay, well, there you go. I almost forgot to do this again. And I'm so happy that I looked, I don't know what happened. I looked back. Oh, I saw it in the mirror or in the, like in my mirror image. I think I saw it. So whew, we did it girls. We got the machine in here. So if you have any more questions about the stamp and cut and emboss machine, just reach out to me. My email was down. If you scroll back in the video, my email's down there. You can message me on Facebook. You can message me through Cards by Christine Page. I'm here to help you with all your stamping needs. So girls, we did it. Okay, so I think I did all my stuff about what's coming up. So I think we're good to go. If you guys need anything in the interim, let me know. And otherwise, we'll be in touch next Thursday night, 6 p.m. Central for another session of Stampin' Live in the Makeshift Hive. Girls, until then, I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the rest of the week leading into next week. Lots of sunshine and happiness and hugs to you. So take care, stay healthy, be safe. <laughs> Love you. Bye.